Okay, in the last section in bioproduction, energy production in oceanography is going to be our 11C, and this is talking about biogeochemical cycling. And if you look at this long word here, we actually have a couple of roots. We have bio, meaning life, geo, meaning like geology in the earth, and chemicals, chemistry, how bond thing, how things bond together, and then how they actually go from one point around to other points and then back to the first point. So matter cycled from one chemical form to another. It's going to go from biotic areas to abiotic. I guess probably started abiotic and went to biotic. But um, whether we're talking about uh, chinops, uh, where we talk about carbon, remember carbon actually has four valence electrons, makes them easily, easily uh, bonded to other things, including itself. Hydrogen, one valence electron, being able to bond with carbon, uh, four times or three times with another carbon. Nitrogen we need for proteins and nucleic acids. Oxygen uh, we need for breathing, uh, breaking down of food, but it's also in photosynthesis and respiration. Phosphorus, we need that for ATP, ADP, uh, we need it for some other things too, and sulfur we need for amino acids for making proteins. So we're cycling all these. We're not going to look at all cycles. We're going to look at car uh, carbon, we're going to look at nitrogen, we're going to look at phosphorus, and we've already looked at the water cycle, um, which was uh, H2O, so using those things. So production, how does that happen? Well, we actually take carbon dioxide, we take water, we add sunshine to it, and actually plants do this, and they make C6H12O6, sugar, and oxygen. In feeding, um, we actually take that material in and we do the exact opposite. We take the sugar and oxygen as food. Um, we also drink water to help for other processes, but we breathe in oxygen so that we can break it down, uh, forming ATP, but also producing carbon dioxide and water. And remember, plants don't produce the sugar and oxygen for us. They produce it for themselves, and they burn it just like we do, producing carbon dioxide and water. So they use cellular respiration as well as the photosynthesis. Decomposition, pretty much the same thing. We're taking organic matter. Bacteria takes in oxygen, um, and it actually becomes carbon dioxide and water. Waste products, uh, when you actually ingest food, your body pulls out what it needs and the rest of it gets passed through, same as it does for all life, including plants. And then dissolution, water being a universal solvent, does a really good job of pulling molecules apart. And you can see this sodium chloride, put it in water, it disassociates into uh, chloride and sodium ions. Um, the water actually goes does that Mickey Mouse thing, which we talked about way back when in like unit one. Um, and actually the negative side, oxygen, actually goes around the uh, positive chlorine and the positive parts of the water actually goes around the negative sodium and just disassociates, that pulls them apart, does not let them associate. So I'm going to give you a copy of the three types of uh, cycles we're going to talk about. And this is the carbon cycle. I apologize already because they're going to be on the small side. But first thing we have to do is we got to figure out where is the carbon dioxide in uh, the environment. And it actually looks like it's right here. So we pull in carbon dioxide through a process called photosynthesis. These are phytoplankton. And the phytoplankton will actually take that material and it'll, they'll be eaten by zooplankton. And they'll actually be eaten by larger things, maybe even bacteria when they decompose. And if you take a look at it, each one of these is giving off CO2 um, as a process of res cellular respiration. And you can see it's going off into all these directions. Uh, we have dead phytoplankton moving in and they're taking its carbon back to the bacteria which releases it back to the atmosphere. The phytoplankton die and they get eaten and they actually take that carbon dioxide and send it up through to the atmosphere but they also pass it down to bacteria for decomposition. Going back to the atmosphere, purple side over here is the inorganic side, the side that's not alive, and this is the organic side. So these are all going to be um, like 
the CO2 that you're breathing in or the plants breathe in. Uh, it's going to be the sugar that you eat. It's going to be other materials that you take into your body that you're going to use to produce biomass, produce more of you. That is the carbon cycle. The abiotic side and the biotic side. Nitrogen cycle works the same way. We'll start up here with oxygen, makes it, or nitrogen making up most of the air that you're breathing, about 71%. Uh, you need this for amino acids, you need this for proteins, but your body can't take in nitrogen from the air you breathe. You need the help of nitrogen fixing bacteria. These are the only creatures that can actually take nitrogen in its gaseous form and turn it into nitrates and nitrites which are actually utilized by plants. So here's the nitrogen bacteria, the nitrogen fixing bacteria that can actually be associated with plant roots like in legumes, beans, soybeans, um, I think they're also in like clover. But if you, they, they actually break, take the oxygen from the air and they actually make it into compounds that goes into the soil and that actually goes to plants. Um, now where they, again this is a marine class so we're not going to talk about grass and trees we're going to talk about phytoplankton and that phytoplankton can do a couple of different things it can actually die and move back to and bacteria will actually disassociate it and back into the ground um, through decomposition it can go back into phytoplankton so it can actually go through that part of the cycle it can actually move into what are called exudate and that's actually when zooplankton uh, I'm sorry, that's actually when the phytoplankton actually leak out material as they get older and their, their cell membranes start breaking down. Um, they can actually go through exudate and then we can actually do munchulate. And munchate is actually when these phy uh, phytoplankton are eaten by zooplankton and the juices that actually get pulled into that point. And then at that point it can actually be eaten by protists which are even bigger than plankton and that material will move over. This is actually called the mic uh, microbial loop so it actually is just staying in microbes. Um, you know you can also throw fish in there and you can throw mammals, marine mammals in there uh, larger in here but again we have the inorganic purple side and we have the organic uh, kind of brown tan side. But basically what happens is that it ends up everything dies and the dead tissue and the dead cells go back, go back to bacteria and the bacteria will release it and you can see that we can actually move it um, back into this cycle it can actually go back into there to nitrites and that can go to nitrous oxides and that can go to denitrifying bacteria where we're actually taking the things out of um, organic nitrogen turning it back into molecular and oxygen uh, nitrogen for the atmosphere so we need bacteria to pull it out of the atmosphere and we need bacteria to put it back in and then all the life is in the middle. Phosphorus, uh, we need this for amino acids, we need it for nucleic acids, so DNA and RNA and again you have a uh, organic side and you have a purple inorganic side and where does the phosphorus start? The phosphorus starts in uh, rock so the rock actually weathers and erodes and that releases phosphate to the soil and that actually is taken up by plants but again this is a marine biology class or a marine class so we're going to talk about phytoplankton and then phytoplankton take the dead cells and that goes to organic phosphorus and they can be mechanically released back to phosphates um, which will eventually go back into rock if it actually accumulates at the bottom of the ocean and gets compressed to sedimentary rock, it gets locked, locked into that rock. It could also be freed um, to the soil again, so it can go back around here. We can also go to dead cells to bacteria. We can go to exudate, so it's giving off liquids or munchate where it's been eaten by the zooplankton. And there's the microbial loop again and it can go to protists and it can go to fish and it can go to mammals and it can, actually this is guano and bone remains so if the fish die and the bones go through they can actually end up being back into rock as well guano is the waste product um, usually we're talking about that with bats because it's high concentrations in a little small area but um, that could actually end up being turned back into phosphate rock which again gets released and you can see it's very cyclic Trophic levels, 
Uh, what happened there? Trophic levels, um, feeding relationships, inefficient energy transfer. Remember, every time we go through one of these arrows, only 10% of the energy goes from what it was, like in the shrimp's case, to the tuna. And then 10% of that, which is 1% of this, goes from the tuna to the shark. And if the shark goes to uh, a grocery store, only 1% of that, which is 1 tenth of a percent of the shrimp and 1 hundredth of a percent of the dinoflagellates and actually much even less than the solar energy. But we have an average of 10% energy moving from one level to the next. So it's always better for these critters. Um, you can actually see this shark. Can the shark get to... Eh, the shark really can't get back past this level, although they probably will eat macro, probably will eat squid. Um, shark would be much better fed going over and eating, eating amphipods or copepods or um, some of these smaller ones, even down here eating diatoms and dianoflagellates um, because they would actually have more energy available to them. We would do the same thing. We'd probably eat these guys a lot more than eating tuna fish because tuna fish um, is at least a 10% or 90% loss is at least 10% gain um, going from the shrimp. It looks like they don't actually eat anything smaller than that. 90% loss per level. And the food chain, direct line of energy, and food web, much more realistic, but also much more complicated, but shows lots of different ways. It's not just going from this one to this one to this one to this one to this one. Um, you could do that if you went this way but it actually is showing that it has much different options. Remember, one kilogram of shark needed 10 kilograms of this smaller shark, which needed 100 kilograms of the ocean fish, needing 1,000 kilograms of copepods, 10,000 kilograms of dinoflagellates, and even more energy from the sun, because they're the ones that are taking it. Um, food chains, food webs, uh, remember different levels. So you have diatoms. And then you have copepods, then you have herring. So this is a three-level food chain, one to two to three. It could also be a one to two to three to four. And every time we increase that level, we lose more and more energy. The herring would be much better eating the diatoms and flagellates um, rather than actually trying to eat all these larger creatures. But that's what a herring likes to eat. Bi biomass, remember, 10% rule. When you go from one to another, you lose 90%, only 10% passes through. So if you had 10,000 kilograms, you only have 100, or excuse me, 1,000 kilograms of this and 100 kilograms of that and 10 kilograms of that and one kilogram of this. So the killer whale, um, actually, actually, if I'm eating this, it probably would go much better going down and eating uh, these anchovies than it would be actually eating anything that eats the anchovies. Microbes. Also consume primary production. Phytoplankton actually will give off liquids. Plankton can be eaten by phyto zooplankton for munchates. Zooplankton excretions can go through. And cyto uh, cyanobacteria, the blue-green algae, um, all producing material for uh, small creatures. Viruses, same thing. And viruses and parasitic critters can do the same with all that. Bacterium, um, bac, uh, bacteria force, um, bacteria uh, can actually go through and decompose matter, breaking it down, releasing iron, vitamins, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, other things to the environment. Here is a uh, bacteria actually being invaded by a virus. The virus actually uh, sends its DNA. That's all there is, is a protein coat. Sends its DNA into a bacteria. Bacteria starts taking the DNA of the virus rather than the DNA of the bacteria and starts reproducing. And then it breaks open and releases hundreds, maybe even thousands of viruses to the environment. And that is the end. Remember, we're much better eating lower trophic levels. So sun comes in with 500,000, 10,000 of these, 1,000 of those, 100, 10, and then one to the human. We'd be much better eating these anchovies down here than we would actually be eating whatever the heck kind of fish that is. We don't like fifth 
trophic level and we like fourth or third or second or first and it would be even better if we could actually get energy from the sun like other creatures okay that's it thanks for stopping by